So I'm super excited about X-Men 97. I literally finished with my roommate uh, about a month ago the and the rewatch of that series. He had never seen it before, and I had forgotten how good that series gets. I'm also really annoyed at all the people that are going, oh, because Morph is now going to be this. It's ruining the story. Really? Is it really, though? Like, because they're going to have him represent what a changeling who doesn't actually have male or female basis. I mean, how long before and after he gained that mutant power do you really think he lost connection like he talked about in the comics to either gender? Like, it stops mattering. This should almost be synonymous with people who don't have a base form and just continuously train, I'm gonna, like change around. And it even hurts the fans that sit there and argue against this when they're all like, but in the comics, that's how he originally looked. I'm like, look, I'm sorry. He just looks like Chameleon from the animated Spider-Man series, but I can deal with that. But are you literally telling me that they're using that version of his looks and that doesn't seem non-gender based? I mean, like, come on. The closest thing he looks like is skin wrapped over a skull with lips and cheeks. It's not really a face. So that kind of bothers me. Thank God Disney's not making the mistake of getting rid of the flight of Storm and Rogue like Fox did. That was embarrassing with their Jubilee Rogue crossover. Like they took the worst elements of Jubilee and the worst elements of Rogue and combined them and said, be happy. But, you know, all those fake fans back then in the day just celebrated how amazing those movies were. And I'm like, look, man, they got Xavier, Magneto, and Wolverine right. They kind of didn't with any of the other characters. Like Scott, really? He wasn't a leader. Not in those movies. And, um, man, Jean Grey had way more problems than she did in uh, the animated series. Like, dude, if you want to know what to do with a good X-Men series, make that series live action. Just take elements from that. I mean, it was inspired by a comic line. Then that series was so popular, it inspired a comic release doing the same run as the TV show. So, all in all, I'm super excited. The negativity from hateful people doesn't even bother me. It's... This is going to be a good show. The worst thing about it, I guess, is that we're not over-sexualizing everything anymore because it's not the 90s and we're not as bigoted anymore because it's not the 90s and it's not okay to be like, hey, that's gay. Yeah, what? why? That that's, that's not a human. They can't be gay. I mean, are you meaning happy? Because that's what that term used to mean. Uh, it's kind of not a really good argument to sit there and go... Well, it, it, it was funny back then when I was a kid. It wasn't funny. You just didn't know better. You didn't know that it was kind of insulting. And that's okay. Some people are bullies. Some people don't care about other people. I don't think it's going to affect this show. But all I hear from these YouTubers is how much this is ruining X-Men, how they're getting and they're trashing our dreams. They're shitting on the legacy of the X-Men. And I'm like... Man, I'm bound tired of seeing people soundbite Stan Lee to get him not to back his own opinion. This guy was a political activist speaking out against all sorts of stuff, and it subconsciously started to influence him. Yeah, it wasn't his original intention with the X-Men, but once he saw how much of a positive impact his subconscious influencing of his characters was having on just anybody who dealt with hardships and you know bigotry of any kind it didn't matter if it was just your skin color or if you were in the lgbtq set in a group it didn't matter this was something you could align with and to say that stanley didn't recognize that because you cut the sound bites off young ripa before he even gets there or like uh what was it josiah rises yeah, that's fine. Ignore every interview where he talks about how that wasn't his original idea, but as soon as he noticed, he started to actually double down on it. Like, y'all forget Blue Marvel was a black guy used to actually point out the racism of the in Marvel universe. He literally left Earth because the president was like, yeah, everybody hates you because you're black, dude, but like, 
I understand you're a hero. I'm not a bigot. So he left for years and then comes back later when people aren't racist? Dude, Marvel's always been political. Marvel has always spoke out about issues like this. And to deny it by sound biting someone so they leave out the part that backs it? You're disgusting. You're a sick little fucking child and you need to grow up. Stop shitting on this man's legacy. Like, Jesus, why? What's the point of it? You want to call yourselves Marvel fans? You want to have sat there and celebrated that man? How about after his death? When my party decided, oh, we're going to go after Stan Lee because he's a racist bigot. All of you came out in his defense. But now that people want to sit there and make some more moves based off of his legacy, you know, not his personal hands doing it, it's us doing it because he was the hands that guided us. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy quote. It's It's kind of embarrassing. Like, you have to try hard to avoid him telling, uh, being able to say the truth. Like, they literally, in the Young Ripper video, soundbite cut right here and start right here. What happened here? Him admitting that it took over his creations and eventually became the whole point of it. Which is why, all of a sudden, you started having Chinese characters like Jubilee, black characters like Bishop. I mean, heck, everybody that's sitting there saying we shouldn't have these characters be changed... You can't even tell me the black characters that existed. Y'all think Moon Knight is the Marvel's Batman. You know, with superpowers, a healing factor, he can't die, he um, straight up kills people. I mean, he used to be a mercenary. Like, there's literally nothing in common. Except, um, he's got a cape and he's got throwing weapons. Hmm, that's sad. Why not let's talk about the guy that has no powers, a super intelligent, rich, is master of seven martial arts styles, um, found, I got like, is the guy that founded a team, um, meets up with local heroes, teams up with all sorts of them because, you know, that's the city this guy is in. And on top of that, funds the team, builds his own armor and own inventions. And no, I'm not talking about Batman, I'm talking about Night Thrasher. Go look him up. Do you know who Brother Voodoo is? That's a really powerful character. That's really powerful. They have, like, come on. We've got loads of characters we could do. But y'all are just going to complain about someone making a logical decision for how to represent morph in a world where people care about someone's sexuality and gender and sexual preference? It's just kind of weird to make and like be picking straws to make complaints at that. It just, I don't know. I didn't even notice. People talked about the trans person in Doctor Who, the new stuff. And I was like, wait, where? I rewatched the whole thing. I was like, huh, I didn't see it. I had to go online and have a YouTuber point it out to me. Really? It's less than two minutes of screen time and less than 20 words. But that somehow was forcing an agenda upon us. Grow up, guys. Learn to make sense. X-Men 97 is going to be amazing. And if we get that exact team doing the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, you know, going from a live action to comic looking universe, maybe they get to come from the animated to the live action. And we just don't know that's coming. I'm hopeful. But most of y'all that sit there and hate on everything before it ever comes out, not even, it's like y'all, if y'all can read the future, can y'all please Tell me what, like, the Southeast Texas um, new lottery tickets coming out are going to be. What's those winning numbers, please? I'll split it with you. If you can tell me those numbers, I'll go buy a ticket. I'll do it. But um, you're going to have to prove to me with actually getting it correct once. Because when all of y'all said this about the Marvels, y'all were completely wrong. And now that Deadpool 3 is coming out, y'all were like, oh, they're going to ruin it. They're calling it Deadpool and Friend. You know Marvel did that to make fun of you and get you to call y'all selves out and expose you? They're closer to looking at the idea of a lawsuit for y'all damaging their reputation with lies, guys. If you're one of those YouTubers claiming all this BS, expect them to make action in the next couple of years. Y'all are authorities, as I am declaring myself to be. We should hold the responsibility of being honest. Because if you can't make good content without being honest, you just can't make good content.